Hey, everybody. Apparently, that's my catchphrase. Yeah. Just wanted to say hi. It's another uh, <laughs> wonderful day here at Game Trade Media. We're doing building character as we do on Fridays at 2 p.m. Love it. And we're doing another character build for our Dungeons and Dragons. I'm Rick. My name's Carrie. Carrie is our guest today. Yeah. She was our guest last time, too. Yeah, well, we're, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, yeah, yeah, two weeks ago. Last week I was in the chat being yeah. like, name him Steve. And <laughs> Hank. <laughs> and Hank, I mean, and it worked out. It did, no, that was a really cool character. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Week, so. so this week, we've got a new character. Yeah. And the miniature we're using as a reference to uh, build a character off of is right here in front of us. It kind of looks like a roguish assassin. Yeah. Or like, you know, because he's got this, he's got this dagger, but the dagger also appears to be made of fire. Yeah. So maybe he's some kind of a, a mage or a sorcerer or something. Yeah, could be a, yeah, a could be some sort of. A spell blade of some sort. Yeah, or a uh, arcane trickster. Yeah. Could be anything. So who's going to let us know? Oh, what yeah, is, it's, it's up to these guys. That's up, that's up to the chat. Yeah, it's up to the chat. So I'm going to share this real quick. I got to get this out to a couple, couple <laughs> uh, pages before you know I get you know sharing again. That's fine. Which happens all the time. <laughs> um, uh, it's too aggressive. Yeah, I, I, I'm an evangelical sharer of of content. Uh, let's go with uh, Dungeons and Dragons. There we go, fifth edition. Christopher says, I can't wait to see you guys try out the second edition of Pathfinder. Ooh. I'm pretty excited. Um, Pathfinder is not a game that I've played a whole lot of. Um, I have the starter kit um, because they put it up on uh, Humble Bundle <laughs> once, yes. and I was like, give me all of these books. Thank you. Um, but yeah, like I haven't, and for me, it's mostly like I haven't found the right group of people to play <clears throat> Pathfinder with. But um, they announced the second edition, which me then meant we had to go back and revise the Pathfinder article for the book that we're working on, the Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop. But that's just sort of how it works out. It's how it works out when yeah. you're covering a topic like tabletop books. But no, I'm very excited. I hope the play tests go well, and I'm I'm very much looking forward to uh, hearing what comes out of that. Christopher asks, "Is that that a mask over the face?" It does kind of look like a mask if you take a, if the we bring the camera in mm -hmm. and take a look. It does look like it has a black mask. I'm going to pull it just away real quick. To me, it looks like there's a a, a mask. Yeah, it could be a mask of of some sort because um, there's not a lot of detail there. So you could easily say that that it's wearing a mask. Um, which then, of course, opens this up for really any kind of uh, potential race. Yeah. Which is is always fun. Because when when you guys posted the photo earlier, just taking a quick glance, I was like, oh, that guy kind of looks like a drow. Ooh. Um, but if if we're going under the interpretation that he's wearing a mask, it, I mean, it doesn't have to be a drow. It doesn't have to be. It could be a, a tiefling. Well, it could be, with no tail, which those do exist, yeah. oddly. We don't like those ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing a tiefling right now in a uh, 5e campaign, yeah. a tiefling bard. Interesting. Is it a musician bard, a poetic bard? A musician a, bard. Okay. Poetic bard. A musician a, bard. Okay, all right. I can dig it. Yeah. He has a uh, a liar, little. As he, he is a liar. Yeah, so he has a liar. Interesting. But it's also playing code stereotypical portrayals of like angels and cherubs and whatnot. Um, often have liars. So yeah. for someone to to look straight out of hell, of hell, also carrying an angelic liar, he likes to likes to play that up a little bit. So. All right. Uh, so uh, Walter asked, "What books are these?" We're using the uh, player handbook. Player's handbooks from fifth edition. Uh, this are going to be our, where we're going to pull the characters out of. Uh, so let's go ahead and just get it started. And how we always do it is, let's roll some stats. Yay! And see where they go. All right. I'm gonna go to the stat cam. <laughs> stat cam. Oh dang it! That one. Di there we go. Sorry. Oh my God! That's really stuck. Yeah, because this peg fell out. Oh. Because, you know, me being me, uh, 8, 9, 10. So 10 is our first ability score. That's we'll, not great. We'll put it somewhere. 
uh, yeah, but I use these big heavy knives oh, in okay. this. Did not like them. Oh, uh, I mean. No, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, yep. No, I can, I can see why uh, something made of wood would not care for those. Name him Ulrich von Septim the Third, half Goliath. <clears throat> Walter says you need a monster manual and DM guide. Ulrich von hmm. Septim. Some, sounds like someone's been playing a lot of Elder Scrolls. Yeah, I wouldn't. The, I wouldn't the, judge them on that. The no, I no. <laughs> At all, because I think you haven't you played it like a sixteen hundred times. Uh, yeah. Yes. Skyrim on many, many things. On all of the platforms. Is that an eighteen? It's a fifteen. Fifteen. Because I uh, dropped that three. Right, right, right. All right. Yeah. So yeah. that's not a bad stat. No. <clears throat> Verilith Ember Spark. That's a cool name. Mm. Verilith Ember Spark. Mm. That goes with the whole flaming dagger deal. Here goes the next one. Dang it, that freaking. <laughs> that spot. It's killing me. There we go. 13. Jeffrey A. Harold says that's his character's name is Ulrich von Septim the Third, half Goliath, and that's his that's his actual character name. Oh. Well, we don't want to make him your character, buddy. Right. You're making We're a, making new a whole character. new character. Not to say that that isn't a cool name, because that no. is a pretty cool name. But uh, the the Septim last name reminds me, because I think that's the the royal family, the the emperor family in the Elder Scrolls games. 15? 14. 14? Yeah. They, stay, they not, are They're okay. They're adequate. Not, they're not, you know, epic, heroic, 18 down the line, but that's okay. Daniel Armstrong says, Eretez, A-R-R-E-T-E-Z-Z. -Z. That's kind of a neat one. Oh, yeah. That sounds very drow. 15. We're killing it does, on the 15s. Yeah, it does sound very drow. Amber, what's up? Help us, everybody. Once we get these stats rolled, we got to put them somewhere based on this miniature to figure out what, what this character is. And then we got, of course, we got to give them a name. So everybody's been dropping the names, suggestions in there. Nice. Because if I were to say, let's make it a name, I'd be like, you know, I'd probably say Orion Frost. But that's one of my character names, and yeah. I'm not going to do that. Sarah this says Damien Stormcloud. Damien Stormcloud. That's a good one. Oh, we've got some. We've got some epic power names. And we've got and some great stats. names and really average stats. <laughs> well, no, I mean, fifteens are aren't bad. And then when we decide the race of this this uh, uh, that's true. character, Fire, it's, so. yeah. Right. Damien Stormcloud is that from something? It sounds familiar. Rogue assassin. Let's take a, Craig. Hmm. Let's take a look at the in the player's handbook under thief. Real quick, and see they have in here. I'm going to have to bring some uh, rogue. All right. Some uh, monk miniatures in. I, I like making monks. I would say with, with the hood, he kind of already looks like this guy. You know, like he, does. he very much looks like the art in the player handbook with like a slightly different color scheme. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's and always good. Th they do have the assassin archetype yes. in here, so we could make this an, a rogue assassin. Mm -hmm. Ooh, who is uh, from like some sort of fire, fire guild or something? Yeah, they were, yeah. Or the, maybe they have some affiliation. Or maybe to he the, can do like a cantrip of, of yeah. some sort. Or ju it's just a, a flaming dagger. That's also true. Yeah, just a plus one and plus two flaming dagger. Zane says hexblade warlock. A hexblade Ooh. warlock. Ooh. Lock. A hexblade Ooh. warlock. Ooh. Now I gotta look that up. Cause that's a good one. Oh, Jeffrey says when I say that's my character's name, that's his name on Skyrim. Oh, okay. Right. Everybody loves Skyrim. That's why they're porting it to every system. Every system. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, I should get Zeb Cook in here one day. Yeah. He works on that game. Yeah. He leads us up the street. Yeah. A lot of those guys are just at the yeah. screen. Yeah, I should bring, ask him to come in one day. Like, hey, we're building a character. That'd be kind of cool. Craig says Kane Highwind. 
That's, as a name. Yeah. That's, what is that from? I know that's from something. I've heard that before. I've, that's from Final Fantasy. That's from Final Fantasy IV. You think I don't know what that's from? That's from Final Fantasy IV. <laughs> Apparently that's from Final Fantasy IV, everybody. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know. That's the dragoon from Final Fantasy IV. Ah. Is the Hexblade archetype? Uh, it's not in it's here. It's not in here. I, I, think, I think that if that's a thing, that may be from the new book that they just came out with, the Guide to Everything. Guy, oh, Xanathar's Guide yeah. to Everything? Maybe, yeah. Hmm. If you guys know which, that, what that's out of, maybe we won't make them this time, but... Now I want to make a Warlock Hexblade because that just sounds cool. <laughs> right. I ca I'm kind of leaning towards a rogue here. A rogue was my very first D&D &D character back when I was in high school. Yeah, uh, Zane says Xanther's Guide to Everything. That's where you'll find it. Okay. All right, cool. I did not bring We're it. We're working that book out of the today. Facebook today. Yep. I, I, so I'm getting ready to go to Gamma and. Uh, I actually might be taking some of my D and D books, you know, just a core, a couple core books, mm -hmm. just because you never know. Right. You never know. Right. While you're there, there might be an opportunity to play some D and D. Um, much like I'll be playing, we'll be playing the uh, second edition of uh, Pathfinder while we're there, doing nice. a live stream. Nice. And then uh, I think I'm also going to take one of my decks for Star Wars Destiny mm. and play that as well. All right. Again, you get all these these gamers together, yeah. even if it's just an industry show. There's some there's some oh, playing yeah. going on. Absolutely. John Dar Uzuro. Craig also says Vivi, V I V I. That's, That's from Final Fantasy Nine. Yeah, he said his um, that character was a, his other favorite character was also. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, Vivi's the black mage from Final Fantasy. 9. Jeffrey says his favorite D&D character is Drist Dorden. Oh, okay. Drizzt. Who, who isn't? I mean, that's that's one of mine as well. That's also my son's, my youngest son's favorite character. So, all right, so Rogue. Rogue, <clears throat> rogue Assassin. Rogue Assassin. I feel like a guy with a dagger like this can't just be a common thief, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, there are other archetypes. Like, there is the arcane trickster who does have some mm. spell, spell. Do you, you know what? Mm -hmm. I kind of like arcane trickster. I do too. I do like arcane tricksters. Daniel says drow sorcerer that takes levels of rogue. Named Eretit's flame brand. Mm. Daniel's got a good one there too. A drow. I, I mean, we could make him a drow arcane trickster. Yeah. What do you guys think of that? That's kind of cool. I think that that'd be. That'd multi-class be him later. Yeah. <laughs> we ain't got time to multi-class on this show. <laughs> As we play him, it's uh. I am gonna look up real quick under sorcerer. Um, what do we got here? Does sorcerer have any other? Uh, You've got wild magic, which oh, is yeah. super fun to play. Um, Drek bloodline and, and sorcerer, but. Um, wow, yeah, wild, wild magic. Wild magic is fun. Yeah. All magic is real fun. Okay. But like I think uh, I think uh, I think we got to go with our think, uh, I think we got to go with our yeah, King Tricks yeah. here. Yeah. And I I think some people in the chat have already said it too. So we're going to go Rogue Arcane Trickster. Which means he's going to be ab about 5th level. Okay. Third level is when you can actually take on the role um, for an archetype. Right. But I think this individual would need to be about fifth level to be, you know, someone of, of note. Right. So based on that, now we got to come up with a race. What do you guys think? Is, is this individual a human, a tiefling, a, a drow? I mean, I don't know. I like drow. I do too, but I don't know if drow is in this book. Take a look. Craig says, "Make him a banray." Ban what? Banray. A banray. Banray. Craig, what is a banray? Will Watson, arcane trickster. <laughs> <laughs> w a d s o n. Will Watson. Will Watson. 
That, that kind of would go with um, Hank and Steve. Right. You know, Will. Hank, Steve, Will. No, we've got Drow in this book. Uh, okay, Dark Elf. Okay, cool, cool. And John says Talon Moonblade. Talon Moonblade. Craig says looks Drow. Looks Drow. That's fair. And maybe, that's that, that's what, and okay. maybe and maybe because of the drow of heritage is why he wears the mask. Yeah, because he wants to conceal his, yeah, his, his heritage. Because heritage. this individual is literally covered from head to foot, so you can't tell what race he is. Right. He is. Right. And uh, so yeah, I, I can see that. We'll go with drow. All right, race, dark elf. So that gives a plus one to charisma. And that's it. Yep. <laughs> he can't go out in the sun. That might be why he's he's got this uh, top the to whole, bottom. Yeah. So yeah. he he he's got the the uh, the the sunlight protection, right? He doesn't get sunburnt. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't <laughs> want I mean, he doesn't want he doesn't want to have uh, you know the the penalties of being in sunlight. So right. head to toe, the mask may have some sort of uh, um, shielding to the light. Mm. Ooh, I so like that. Something you know, that would negate the sunlight sensitivity right. um, yeah. flaw for this race. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Now, here is my question. Do you get the... Because, you know, I don't, do a, I don't play a lot of elves. You I have, don't either. Your elf character has very naturally... The, you know, ability score increases just for being an elf. Dex... Is increased by two. Do you also is is that in conjunction with Drow? Do you get the yeah. Dex bonus plus the I believe uh, so. charisma bonus? Because the the only other ability and score increases for individual types of elves is like a a plus one. All right. So you get the plus two on Dex, and then okay. like high elves get plus one <clears throat> in, and wood elves get plus plus one on wisdom. Okay. So here's my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Obviously, one of the 15s is going to drop in the deck, so that'll make it a 17 because of the plus two for Elven trait. Right. I feel like taking the 15 and putting in Charisma as well, giving it a 16, mm -hmm. and though he, he covers himself, uh, this individual is, you know... Suave. Suave. Has a smooth talker. Smooth talker, yeah. yeah. Can really manipulate, really manipulate through, not so much through bluff, but through... Um, what, Persuasion. Which another one? And, like uh, do, through deception, through subterfuge. Yeah. You know, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and persuasion. Right. Yeah, we'll give that that. So this is maybe a character who, yeah, he's an arcane trickster, but maybe he's good as as working as a spy. Absolutely. Yeah. Ooh. Mm. 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 All right. I see what we got going on here. People were saying that yes. Yeah. Whatever your question was, the yeah, answer was. Got <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I don't claim to know everything in the book. That's why there is the book to reference. Yes. And because everybody that's out there, you guys, we all, as a, as a community, come together and we can figure this all out. Right. Um, you got to help this simple old man. I like 5e a lot because um, the only other edition that I had played before was 2 mm -hmm. back in high school, um, which in the grand scheme of things for me, not that long ago. Um, but our DM was um, my friend's dad, okay. so that was all he knew was was second edition. Of course. So going from second edition to fifth edition is a significant jump. Yeah, third um, edition was very crunchy, had a I lot like, more stuff. I like fifth edition a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Levi, I can't name him Jarlaxle. Huh? We can't name this guy Jarlaxle. Jarlaxle? Yeah, Jarlaxle is one of, uh, he's a, a drow from the Dark Elf oh, okay. stories with Drist and everybody. Let's see, we got that's, uh, Daniel okay. says, "Man, three point five was the best." Three point five was pretty good, yeah. But that's where Pathfinder is. So right. Pathfinder plays in that arena. Yeah. So. Don't they call Pathfinder like D and D three point seven five? Three point seven five yeah. hashtag with errata. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Craig agrees that he likes five. The blind. It's very easy to get into. Yeah. So we have some other stats we got to drop here. So, and they're all really good. Um, we have, our lowest one is a 10. So where do you guys think we should drop a 10 on this character? Arcane Trickster is gonna need that high intelligence, I mm -hmm. feel, for the spell casting and all that stuff. So a 13 or a 14 in there. Decent I'm constitution. Feeling, I'm feeling probably a 14. 
in intelligence. In, it, yeah. in intelligence. Because that also helps with, you know, the right. persuasions and, and such. All right. And then uh, I kind of feel like a 10 strength because he's going to be a dex fighter. Right. You don't. So, he's not going to need yeah, a ton of strength because this is a character that's going to succeed in his business and succeed on his quests by uh, talking his way in and out of certain situations. I agree. He doesn't need to be all muscle-headed. That's a Steve and Hanker for Right, us. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and what's funny is I kind of can see this character playing in that same adventuring party. Right. They'd be like, God, man, you, you, that sucks. Maybe not necessarily <laughs> the same exact adventuring party, but certainly sort of like intersecting with those characters as Absolutely. they sort of like move around the same setting. Craig and Sarah say strength, uh, 10 in strength. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Now we got, um, so we basically have the stats there. We know that we're gonna fall under, you know, uh, the abilities here. We'll take a look at what, uh, which ones we wanna choose. Skills, choose from skills, choose from four from acrobatics, athletics, deception, insight, intimidation, investigation, perception, performance, persuasion, sleight of hand, and stealth. Uh, we already know that persuasion for this character is going to be a good one to have. Yeah, absolutely. I would say persuasion. What else we got? Um, Pro I would say maybe sleight of hand because that's a that's a dex boost. And investigation. I kind of want to go deception. And deception? But yeah. I don't know if that's too close to persuasion because sometimes that's yeah. it's very similar and maybe right. you want to go investigation. We can do both We because oh, we still have two slots to All pack. Right. So we can take deception and both investigation. Both is good. Both is good. <laughs> so the reason I kind of feel like this character would run with Steve and Hank, and here's, here's my... Th thoughts behind this because I'm sure Hank and Steve are trying to break this curse mm -hmm. this individual would be the guy you'd hire yeah you'd be like oh you know about magic but yet you're also kind of sneaky and sly and you can get into places you've been around the, the realms and stuff yeah I would hire this guy to help find out where that curse could potentially be broken right and as an arcane trickster he's probably pretty interested in, oh, that's some pretty high powerful magic yeah, stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Like, but, he, he's in it for himself. Like, oh, he's absolutely. like, yeah, I'll help you because you're going to pay me some money. Um, but he would be interested in just sort of, like, learning that type of magic for his own personal yeah, maybe he let, reasons. Yeah, maybe later on the road, someone's going to do me wrong, do me dirty, mm -hmm. and I got to drop a curse on him. Right. And, or, or something. Right. Who knows? Make a deal with the devil, yeah. Scene brings us to alignment. Right. So just real quick, we're gonna do a rundown of what we got here. So <laughs> this beautiful rogue is a fifth level rogue arcane trickster, dark elf. Um, his stats are strength 10, dexterity 17, constitution 14, intelligence 14, wisdom 13, charisma 16. So he's got That's solid. really good stats. Yeah. Um, We've taken deception, investigation, persuasion, and sleight of hand as the initial skills. Craig, and Craig says warcaster, uh, spell nipper, niper, sorry, or crossbow expert as feet. I say crossbow as it removes a disadvantage when using ranged attacks. In melee, yeah. Mm. And Ooh. as a as a drow, he already has proficiency with crossbows. Right. So that would be a good feat to take. Mm. Crossbows, yeah. Expertise in perception and thieves tools. Yes. Yep. Because, yeah, so this, indiv this individual is already going to be sick. <laughs> um, we, we A lot of names were dropped earlier, mostly from Final Fantasy and, <laughs> and, and Skyrim. Um, so let's, let's do a quick rundown. If you guys could drop us some cool name ideas. For a drow. For a drow. Well, get, those, get those Zs in there. Yeah, Xs and Zs, everybody. <laughs> And also the alignment. Not, it doesn't have to be evil. It doesn't have to be good. I don't know. I'm kind of personally, and obviously, if the chat is like, no, um, we'll do whatever. We'll do whatever the chat wants. Um, I'm, I'm kind of feeling like neutral evil. Like neutral evil. I, I mean, I can feel that too. Like 
he's not a good guy. Right. And he does things purely out of selfish reasons. Much like Steve mm -hmm. would have been. But I don't think he would be, because we decided Hank and Steve were chaotic neutral. Ish. Ish. I don't remember exactly. I neutral. think so. There's I think it was chaotic neutral for those guys because okay. they were like selfish, but like, you know, they were just sort of doing things on a whim. I'm looking at one of these names. Oh. Landros Drowlicerin. <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> kind of a rogue, kind yeah. of a out for himself kind of character. Yeah. I do like Landros. Landros? Landros. L A N D R O. Like Lando, yeah. With Z. Z's on the end, ah. two, apostrophe two Z's, Lando's. You know what? I I kind of I kind of like that. Drowlisian. Drowlisian. <laughs> I feel kinda like that's a away. little on the nose. Yeah, La Land Lando's kind of is a good first name, mm -hmm. but we can't give Drowlisian. We have to come up with something else because Drow. I mean, we don't want people to know he's a Drow. Right. He's trying to hide that. That's why he wears yeah. a mask. Daniel says chaotic neutral, and K Craig says neutral evil. We got some, we we also have um, lawful neutral. Uh, lawful coming, neutral coming from Jeffrey. This is a guy who breaks the law. I feel like lawful alignment is probably <laughs> probably yeah, not, out. Yeah, not in his not in his jam. <laughs> uh, Blaine says Shizzler as a as a name. Like Sizzler, like mm. the restaurant. Are there still Sizzlers? There are. Uh, yeah, and Shonies. Shoney. Mm -hmm. I haven't eaten at one of those. Uh, Daniel says Eretes Firebrand again. Caddock neutral. I mean, Eretes is a pretty good name. I, I kind of like Lando's Eretes. I kind of like that. Lando's? Lando's Eretes. Eretes. Let's go with that. That's we're, a good we're one. Taking, we're taking two things and we're putting them together and making something nice. I like this. Lando's Twosies. Twosies. <laughs> Levi, who had the Lando name, said, um, I was pointing out his sly smoothness. <laughs> his, ah. He absolutely has it. That is a fact. I like that. A R R E, one T, E Z Z. There we go. All right. That's a T. Lando's Arities. Wow. From, you know what? I like that. Yeah, I do too. It, looks, it actually looks like a, a good a drow character. It name. does, yeah. And he could just call call himself Lando. Obviously, yeah. you know, it is, he don't, don't doesn't want everybody to know all the Z's. Right. You're like, you have a lot of Z's in your name. That's very indicative of just drought. <laughs> Let me see your face. <laughs> <laughs> Roll the RSS. <laughs> we have all right. So chaotic neutral has been thrown around a lot. Okay. And chaotic neutral can be fun. It's a little on the wild side. Yeah, very much so. I mean, I I was kind of leaning towards um, neutral evil, just just based on the kind of work that this kind of person would be doing. Um, chaotic neutral is, I think, the most fun alignment to yeah. play. You can play a little, little, little just tick. do whatever you want. It's, yeah. I meant it for me. I'm actually gonna look up uh, look up alignments and kind of because they should have. The whole this is uh, yeah. this is how it how it plays out when you choose that alignment. Daniel says when you say the name you uh, you should roll the R's and the Z's. Oh, like <laughs> Lando's. Yeah. Er I, it it is. I can't roll my tongue like that. I'm too white. <laughs> Alignments. 122, not at the planes, but we'll go to 122. See what it says. Yeah, all right. <clears throat> so the difference between, so like chaotic neutral. These creatures follow their whims, holding their personal freedom above all else. Many barbarians and rogues and some bards are chaotic neutral. Meanwhile, lawful evil methodically, or neutral evil, uh, those who do whatever they can get away with without compassion or qualms. Many drow, mm. some cloud giants, and yugoloths are neutral evil. And, you know, we'd absolutely reference yugoloths because that's a character class. <laughs> so are cloud giants? Drow. Drow, though. Drow, yeah. yeah. I mean, neutral evil is... It, it, yeah, yeah, this this is very neutral. much... This could go either way. Yeah. 
Do we want to? Do we want to throw a dice for it? How about that, guys? I, I mean, I wrote chaotic neutral, but I can easily unwrite it because you know science. Right. But um, odds, it's uh, chaotic neutral. Chaotic neutral, neutral evens neutral. Neutral, neutral evil. evil. It is even. So neutral evil. Neutral evil. All right. Yeah, Craig had said um, neutral evil because he's a rogue and he's out to venture on his own games. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, again, he he's doing what he can get away with. He's in yeah. it for himself. He yeah. doesn't really have any compassion for who he's screwing over in the process. Right. Whereas someone who is neutral evil is doing what they want, but maybe feels bad about it later. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, this guy, neutral evil, he's going to be like, Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got hurt and died oh. because I took you on a quest? Wah. Yeah. <laughs> go, go tell it to mommy. Right. <laughs> Have you ever played an evil character in a campaign? Nope. I did once. Yeah. There's reasons I don't play evil characters in D&D. &D. Uh, it's probably because of what happened when I played a neutral. What happened? I played did you kill a, everybody in your I, party? I, well... <laughs> um... Sort of. Um, I, I played a character who was sort of like <coughs> the... He ended up turning into the big bad for the campaign that we were doing, where um, I was actually, I was running two characters at, at okay. once. So I was running my rogue, who was chaotic neutral, and then I was running um, a, a sorcerer who was neutral evil. And um, mm -hmm. he had enslaved this army of kobolds to do... So 10 kobolds. Like, a hundred of them. And... The kobold uh, armies are 10. Yeah. But a hundred is like an armada. Yeah. If a, a land armada. Many, many kobolds <laughs> to it. basically um, <clears throat> do this crazy illegal mining operation. Um, and the kobolds were causing problems for the villagers because, right. like, these people would go out hunting and doing their daily lives, and they would run into, like, 15 kobolds and be like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. And it would cause problems. And so, like, my, my mage character um, got uh, discovered by the party basically just washing his clothes down by the river and they were like who are you and he immediately like put the charm on and was like oh i'm so lost i've been lost for days because he knew mm -hmm. if they knew that he was the one in charge of this right. that they would kill him immediately of course so murder hobos being what they were yeah so once the rest of the party started to come to the realization that this character was not who he said he was i just fireballed the party <laughs> all right I can see this. <laughs> it didn't end well. Um, no. And that was, yeah. Of course, this is Many ten. Ten. Ago. This is ten years yeah. ago now. So the reason I I, I don't though. play evil characters because it, that happens. That does happen, but because <laughs> I DM all the time, mm -hmm. and as a DM, you are playing the antagonist mm -hmm. all the time. And the, granted, an evil playing an evil character doesn't necessarily mean you're an antagonist. Right. But I play when I white play when I want to play. I want to play that heroic. No, that's it, fair. I want to be I want to be the good guy, the heroic good guy for once, and not be all these other characters that I have to role play as a as a DM. Right. So and that, that's why I do it. No, that's fair. Yeah. Because so. I haven't ever DM'd, mm. so I was like, oh, you're gonna let me be the bad guy? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now. So I blew up my friend's characters, and then the next day had to like be in jazz band with them. It's Ooh. That probably didn't go well, did it? That was awkward. Levi yeah. said, um, to me, he sounds like lawful evil drow rogue, rogue mastermind. Yeah. 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 He's, I mean, he, he's, he's still evil, guys. Yeah. <laughs> and lawful evil, uh, as a lawful evil drow, drow rogue mastermind, that's a cool character concept in itself as well. Yeah. I would, I would take something like that and absolutely use that as a potential antagonist against my party. Yeah. Uh, as I was running against him. Uh, Craig says he played an evil psionic in 3.5, party got wasted. Yeah, mm. well, psionics were so OP. And I love psionics, so I love using them in games. Uh, so. I've never played one, but like they sound extremely bad. Yeah, I and mean, you can basically turn, there was one ability where you could you know, take someone and basically put their outsides on, or their insides on their outside. Just flip them out. It's like 
Yikes. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> That's how powerful they were. Big time yikes. Yeah, it was crazy. All right, so we've got our stats, we've got our skills, um, level, name, alignment. The other part is uh, we got to come up with the personality traits, the background. The, you know, we like those are some of the other fun parts here. So we have. <clears throat> So for those of you that obviously play, which is everybody, it seems, <clears throat> what are some... Uh, some personality traits yeah, the, that would go with a neutral, evil, yeah. arcane trickster? Yeah, are we going acolyte, criminal, sh a charlatan, I entertainer? I think charlatan is a... Charlatan's a good one. That's a fun one. <clears throat> Guild artisan. Guild artisan. Mm, not so much, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. A hermit. Noble. Um, there's so many. Outlander. Outlander's not bad either. Um, what is this one? Sage? Yeah, Sage. So I actually play an arcane trickster who is has the Sage background. Interesting. Yeah. Um, oh, he's an ar archaeologist. He's my Indiana Interesting. Jones. Interesting. Yeah. Sailor. Now, I like, I think Charlatan is, is interesting. This is someone who can, Ooh. uh, they say you can tease out someone's heart's desires after just a few minutes of conversation. Yeah. I think that kind of fits that with his... Fits this character. That fits his skill set, certainly. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Levi says, folk hero. <laughs> 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 you come from a humble social rank, but you are destined to be so much more. Already the people of your home village regard you as their champion, and your destiny calls you to stand against the tyrants and monsters that threaten the common folk everywhere. Now here's the funny thing about Charlton. He could basically make himself appear to be this folk hero. Mm -hmm. That's all. I mean, uh, Charlton can literally yeah. put on the persona of any of He's these. He's really good at lying. Yeah. Literally, one of his features is false identity. You've created a second identity that includes documentation, established acquaintances, and disguises that allow you to assume that persona. So maybe this is just one of several different masks that this guy has. Yeah. And he's got a few different ones, yeah. so that whenever he goes to different villages and whatnot, he's that town's folk hero, but really what he's doing is just this elaborate scheme. To keep his pockets full and his yep. belly full. Yeah. This character is yeah, getting to be really bad. <laughs> um, Charlton fits perfectly, says Levi. Daniel has a good one here, noble for his charisma, and being he could be a noble of noble blood from the under realms. It's also good, the charisma factor from a noble, but the thing is, is, as a noble, again, he could portray as a charlatan as a noble. Yeah. And as a noble, though, I, I don't think he he would want to talk about his nobility. No, because he's trying to hide the fact that he's a drow. Right. So, like, yeah. if he is of drow nobility, he's not going to be like, hi, That's I'm right. Prince Mr. Drow. Right. <laughs> And but they do understand wealth, power, and privilege. Right. You carry a noble title, and your family owns lands, collects taxes, and wields significant po political influence. Right. Yeah, he would be a, not about that day, unless no. it's a character he's going to charlatan. Yeah. Yeah, Levi and Daniel both say charlatan. I think charlatan yeah. is, is a good one. And actually Sarah, too. Um, just just because of, like, the, the schemes. Mm. Can cheat at games of chance, uh, forge documents. Um, I like the idea that this is a guy who forges documents for other people. Not just for himself, mm -hmm. but like maybe he's a guy that like other people go to when they're trying to smuggle themselves into different parts of, of yeah. the region. Yeah, and, and sometimes instead of taking coin, he takes favors. Yes. He's like, you know what? You don't owe me anything right now. I'll take care of you. But I may have to call upon a, a favor somebody. Yep. He's all about that, the favors. Yeah. Yeah. So I like that too. So forge documents, but I, the scam, I, I kind of feel like he might have a second scam too. Right. And I like uh, where he can, I put on new identities just like I put on clothes. Mm -hmm. So in one town, he could be a forger of documents mm -hmm. when he's ever there, you know, because uh, like a port city. Right. You, you might need that. Right. But when he's in a inland area where there's a lot of like cute little caravans. mountain town yeah, yeah or a mountain town he might be someone that uh writes poetry and woos the women of nobility <laughs> right and takes on that noble classic yeah. persona and be like you know I might oh need yeah you know yeah. my family my family is is 
they're they're long gone, but they've left me with a great, great deal, amount of great amount of wealth, and a large plot of land. Yeah. And my family. Have you ever heard of the uh, the uh, Aratus Shipping Company out of you know Cormier? Right. No. Wow. Oh. Wow. Well. Well. <laughs> you uncultured swine. swine. Yes. <laughs> Craig says hat of disguises as an item. Oh, oh. yeah. That, yeah, that would be a good one. Yeah. I, I, I actually think I will put that down as part of his equipment, a hat of disguise. And Daniel says he would use his diplomacy experience to infiltrate. Absolutely. Mm. It's like I, I almost want to take like all of these scams. Like He works them all the time. Right. It could be, yeah, maybe he cheats at games of chance. I, but I kind of feel like this character doesn't even play games of chance, doesn't even care. No, because he, he doesn't need to. Yeah, he's going to play the games he can win. Right. I know I can forge a good document. I'm right. going to play that game. Right. I know I, know I can convince this uh, the, the daughter of the local dude. Yeah, which is insinuate to, uh, myself into people's lives yeah. to prey on their weaknesses and secure their <laughs> for, fortunes for myself. I can see him doing this. I put on new identities like clothes. I run sleight of hand cons on street corners. Doesn't have to do that. Right. He may be really good at sleight of hand, but he doesn't need to do that. Right. Um, but convince people that worthless junk is worth their hard-earned money. Like, ah, yes, this, these, uh, this beautiful plastic clip pair of glasses from the far-off land of who whatever. Knows where. Yeah. Is absolutely some necessary. Now, this here dice is a magical die that I picked up in the desert of Anorak. And I, I, I claimed it from a goblin sorcerer, mm -hmm. and this dice has never lost me a game, and it'll never lose you a game either. Hundred gold. Yep. <laughs> oh my God. Oh gold. wow. What an investment. I will purchase this. <laughs> what was your name, sir? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> In a flurry of cloak and yeah. <laughs> pop. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Jeffrey's right. He he does patents of nobility. Yeah, of, like a knight's tale. Yeah. That yeah. I think. Absolutely. Uh, I like this guy. This is a fun character. Yeah, this character. It's it's what's fun is when everybody's throwing down their information here. Um, you know, he should use his diplomacy yeah, uh, expert experience to infiltrate. He could uh, put expertise in second level in deception and persu uh, persuasion. Mm -hmm. Um, weapon of choice as a rapier and daggers, nothing too bulky. Again, quick getaways right. coming from Levi. Craig says arcane trickster. Yeah, he's absolutely. Oh shoot, that's good. Like, if after fifth level as a rogue arcane trickster, he now goes two levels warlock, then he could take on uh, the cast mask of many faces. Ooh, ooh, ooh that would be cool. <laughs> yeah, that would be super cool. All right, so. <clears throat> For scams, all we're gonna go one, no, two, three, four, and six. Yeah. He does all of them. <laughs> I like how the book is like, roll a dice, and we're like, no, all. Like. Yep. Well, that's a fun thing about D and D, and you, you just all know play this. Play however you want. It's about having fun. Right. And it also, I mean, you can pick. Even for personality traits, if more than one fits this, the character you're trying to create, you can pick more than one. And the same thing with flaws, once we get down to there, which, you know, are the worst. Right. But <laughs> <laughs> like, I like this. The uh, flattery is my preferred trick for getting what I want. I think that probably fits him the best. I agree, because I don't think sar sarcasm and insults are the, his weapons. No. Because I, I, I do think that he would be more the flattering type. Right, charming. Yeah. Um, that and I lie about almost everything, even when there's no good reason to. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Levi asked, "Did we take?" Levi asked, "Did we take the sleight of hand skill?" We absolutely yeah. took sleight of mm -hmm. hand skill. Uh, but even though we're not going to do the dice and the card games and the uh, you know the the three card Monty type right. street corner stuff, because he, I feel like he's like those games are those, they're, that's, they're beneath. Yeah, him that's at beneath this point. him. It's, how am I going to woo that? Uh, noble's daughter mm -hmm. to secure that wealth if I'm over here playing street games. Right. I don't want to be known for that. Right. But I want to be known for, you know, that. Lady. Lady killers. So, yeah. Absolutely. Craig says, after 21 years, I'm pretty good at character generation. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So, now we're into personality traits. And you said flattery. Flattery. Is there any other ones that might kind of fit his... Besides flattery and being a liar? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's a liar. <laughs> he lies. I lie about almost everything, even when there's no, reason, no good reason to. 
I don't know if he would necessarily be that blatant in his lies. You I think? think every lie he does, he would tell, would have purpose. Yeah. Not just because, it, you know, like, if someone asked him, hey, were you done at the, the market this morning? Why, yes, I was. And he absolutely wasn't. Had, if it didn't have a purpose right. to where he's trying to get No, to, that's fair. Um, he, he lies when there's a purpose to lie. Yeah. Uh, we, we should put that down there as his personal, a purposeful liar. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, of course, because these are, you know, you don't have to choose these when you're building a character. These are just suggestions um, of things that would make sense for a charlatan personality character. Oh, uh, Levi says, sleight of hand is also good for planting items for deception. That's also true. To, to, to that, and that, I think that would be more along his lines of, yeah. of using that skill. Sleight of hand is more than just card yeah, tricks. Card tricks, right. yeah. Uh, it, it is opening those doors and locks, obviously, but it also is pl planting stuff on people that you're trying to, if you're trying to make yourself look better in a court mm -hmm. situation, um, and this young lady is, you know, also see, having eyes for someone else, you plant something that, like, oh that my God. That makes him look bad. Oh yeah, oh my God, he stole something or, he or stole was, the barkeep's favorite jewels. Right, like. something, something crazy like that. It's like, hey, has anybody seen, my mother can't find her, her, her favorite necklace. Right. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I thought I saw so-and-so come right. out of the room. And it's like, what? Check him. And there they are. Right. Oh, my God. Which goes along with the pur purposeful lying. Right. Purposeful lying. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. So next we go into ideals. Uh, independent, free spirit. No one tells me what to do. That's part of that chaotic line. But right. neutral. What do we got on there? doesn't really have a neutral line. No, not really. Because he's not going to be fair. He's not, you know, he's he's an evil character. He's not going to be like, oh, little Jimmy doesn't have mm -hmm. enough money if I take this. He's going to be like, I'm taking this. <laughs> this is mine now. Right. Um, he's I'm not going to be charitable. No. Creativity, never run the same con twice. I think he would, just mm -hmm. not in the same town. Right. So Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I would say, you know... I think one in six would kind of fit here. Fit independence here. and aspiration. Yeah. 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 You know, he's not going to let anyone necessarily tie him down in one place for far too long because once you've fleeced one town hard enough, you kind of have to move on to the next one. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> um, but uh, he does want to be known. Yeah. In, in his own way. He, mm -hmm. uh, even if it's... If, if he's like, he, let's say, he, like you said, he flees this town and he's in another city, and yet as he's walking around and there, you know, the town criers saying, uh, like, hear ye, hear ye, let it be known that in the city of so and so, the the house, something fell, rumor has it, it all, it was because of, you know, the Crimson Evader or something. Right, the and, Crimson Evader. <laughs> who knows? You know, I'm looking at the miniature here and, and you know, the Crimson Evader. That's funny. And it is what they've dubbed him in some capacity, and, and he'd be like, they don't know it to me. Right. And but he doesn't maybe he doesn't want the fame where there are like where every he doesn't want everyone know to know, know who it. he is. Um, but he wants But he wants to be a known entity. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. You know, he's behind the curtain, but when he's seen it's this big thing, but it's all an illusion. Yes. You know, in that in that sense, but yes. they don't know really see or know who he is. Right. Kind of like that. The man behind the yeah. mechanisms. Yeah. Pull, yes. Pulling the strings. Yes. <laughs> Le Levi says, I can see him always keeping his word, question mark, which someone actually said earlier, too, hmm. I, interestingly. Like, keeping, keeping his he word. He may. I think it depends on what kind of relationship someone has with him, though. Because I don't think he's inherently trustworthy. Right, but I, I feel like if he, if he makes a promise, like, if he says to somebody, I am going to take you for everything you have. <laughs> yeah. That's the truth. That's a promise. <laughs> and it will happen. But I also feel like, to an extent, if one of his good contacts mm -hmm. in a certain town is like, hey, I need you to you know, forge these documents for me so that I can smuggle all of this contraband into right. the city, he'd be like, I got you, fam. Like, yeah. I it's agree. one of those things where he's very much a uh, what have you done for me lately kind of type where right. like as long as you keep playing his game he'll keep playing yours. Right. 
And that's not a and that's not a bad trait to have. For this character, it could almost be a flaw that you know if he says. Uh, it, you know, if someone hires him to get something that may even be a little bit beyond his personal skill, right? He'll he'll make that promise. You know what? I will get that for you. Right. I'm also going to get the other six things I know that's yeah. in that building or in that room. Right. Uh, but I'm you know, but he may have to uh, even hire out some other hands to help right. him with that. And will he screw those other hands over? Probably. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Daniel says, sounds like a good role play side character. Let combative. Uh, let combative more behind the scenes building a criminal organization from the ground up with his abilities. Mm. Yeah, less combative, more, more uh, city. I feel like this, this individual isn't necessarily the dungeon delver. Right. You know, if you're in a political campaign or a city campaign mm -hmm. of some sort, this is a character you could absolutely find yourself yeah, playing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But like he can certainly hold his own in combat. Oh, yes. With with the spell skills that he has, yeah. as well as the weapon proficiencies yeah. that he has, because I think as a as a drow or maybe as a rogue, he has short swords, rapiers, rapiers, and, and crossbow, ra and crossbow, and rapier because of his dexterity, the dex yeah. combat weapon for him. So he's gonna get all those dex bonuses. Here's the thing about rapiers as well, is that um, at least from my perspective, they seem inherently noble. Yeah. So the, like again, carrying, carrying one with him at all times, like yeah, he can absolutely use it in combat, mm -hmm. but it's also there to keep up the illusion of Anybody being of, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. Right. Maybe he's encrusted the, uh, the, the scabbard. Pommel. Yeah. As well as the the pommel yeah. with with some stuff he's snatched, yeah, <laughs> yeah, snatched from previous towns. Yeah, that'd be perfect. It's, and so now we got to move on to bonds. So um, I fleeced the wrong person and must work to ensure that this individual never crosses paths with me or those I care about. Hmm. Um, <laughs> I like this next one. I owe everything to my mentor, a horrible person who's probably rotting in jail somewhere. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Somewhere out there, I have a child who doesn't know me. Nah. Nah. First off, I don't think he would care. No, I know he'd be like, "Man, <laughs> I got how many kids?" Yeah, it's not like it's not like the uh, the tax man's. He's coming. never he's never going back for him. Right. No, I, I feel. I mean, that's just how bad he is. Right. A powerful person killed someone I love. Someday soon, I'll have my revenge. I don't think he cares. No. I swindled and ruined a person who didn't deserve it. No. Again, doesn't care. No, I would say probably the probably. Mentor. I was going to go with one. I was going to go with I fleeced the wrong person. He maybe fleeced like an actual, like maybe the head of like an actual criminal org organization in a city. He mm. maybe played with like the sort of mafia equivalent. And um, now, you know, maybe he doesn't, he doesn't avoid that city completely, but when he's there, he has to be on, on, on guard. Point. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I mean, that's not a bad one. We'll go with fleeced. Levi says, when the dirty stuff needs to get done, you call Lando's the Crimson Shadow to get it done. Crimson the Shadow. The Crimson Shadow. Uh, I like it. Sounds Fle a little cheesy, but I'm about it. Fleeced wrong person. Um, which, um, which uh, in the Star Wars sense, Lando probably has done that himself. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, and we know Han has done it, so. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, hey. are you excited for the movie? I am. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of eh. I'm excited that. because uh, I just like the fact that there's another Star Wars movie in my lifetime. Yeah. And I get to go experience more. Yeah. So. I hope it's good. That's it. I hope so too. The uh, but I also think we should also put down owes everything to their mentor. Oh, yeah. Just and which is another you know if you want to actually write out a backstory as to how he became skilled in his stuff. Right. It'd be like you know like when I was still down in the uh, dark, you know, in the underdark and uh, being trained in my weapon specialization, you know, um, my mentor was this other guy who was like a weapons master for a house. And when I left, I made sure, you know, <laughs> he got put away because yeah. I didn't like him and he was mean to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I do everything I know. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. But also, uh, good night and good luck. Yeah, like. exactly. <laughs> So I'm writing that, everything to a mentor as well. Daniel says, for sure, I, I just feel like I would really get into the diplomatic side of this character, playing yeah. the long game, setting up a plan to build an empire of making money. 
Yeah, I do feel like this character would want to build an empire, not just in a one city, but a large network. Right. So that every, every place he's ever been, he's established something that will continually funnel him some sort of income. Right. Which would only help him. Like, let's say he starts off in a small small town, and as he's moving to bigger and bigger cities, his goal is to go to the, you know, water deep. Yeah. And now I, well, I, when I get there, I'll have all this influx of income. I'm going to infiltrate the Thieves Guild or something here or figure out who, the, how it works, and then I'm going to make my own way and become, or just infiltrate the nobility. Right. And then work on that level. Right. He shows up, he's dressed to the nines. Right. You know, he's he's clearly a man of wealth. You know, he could probably strut right in at that point. Exactly. Uh, woo the... Uh, Whomever. The, the, Whomever. the nobility's yeah. eldest daughter. And yeah. then uh, establish himself and then quickly get rid of the rest of the family. Yeah. This sucks that the, the, the uh, in Waterdeep, uh, they have what's called the Lord, the mm -hmm. Lords of Waterdeep, and nobody knows who they are. Well, we know because of source books who they are. So it'd be interesting if he's like, that's his goal. He wants to eliminate the Lords of Waterdeep. Oh. I mean, that's a huge aspiration. And, and be, and be the, the Lord. Lord. Yeah. Mm. The Lord of Waterdeep. Mm. Yeah. That would be kind of neat. Or, Super interesting. Or Skullport, which is a, the, the thieves city underneath. Right. So who knows? Both. This, yeah. Here's the thing, he's a, he's a man of many faces. Mm -hmm. He could easily put on airs that the, there's two different people running running each end of yeah. things. And that they might be in contention against each other, but mm -hmm. it's all working for him. Yes. Ah, oh, so good. It's so good. All right, so we gotta come with flaws as, as we are, and this will be the last thing we do because we're getting to our hour. I like the first one, which is I can't resist a pretty face. <laughs> that, I do like that one as yeah. well. He sees, he sees a pretty go girl at the bar and he's just like, Mm -hmm. He forgets what he's what he's actually there for. Momentarily. Yeah. Yeah. Like he'll get it's, back it's to a, work. Yeah. Can't resist a pretty face. I also like. I think it's the third one down. Convinced no one could ever fool me the way I fool others. Right. A little full of himself. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. I can see that with this character. Yeah. That he sees himself as the smartest person in the room, no matter what right. room he happens to be in. Exactly. I don't think he's too greedy for his own good. I think he's he's greedy just enough. Yes. I can't resist swindling people who are more powerful than me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a big one. <laughs> can't yep. resist the swindle. <laughs> yep. Which could kind of go along with the pretty face. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, I hate to admit it, and I and will hate myself for it, but I'll run and preserve my own hide if the going gets tough. I don't think he would actually. No, do I don't that. think this is someone who would just see it as another part of the challenge. Yeah, I agree. All right, well there we have it. Uh, we've got the character pretty much the the meat of the character together. Yeah. Uh, so you'll see all this stuff put up online with the uh, the image here soon. Um, we'd like to thank everybody for coming out. Thank you, Carrie, for yeah, coming absolutely. and rolling this up. Yeah, absolutely. This is always fun. It's always fun. I love rolling up characters, even if I'm never going to play them myself. I don't, and what's funny is we've done so many of these. I think I, I need to just take all the ones we've built and put them in like a little... A game. Or a game yeah. or available for others to use. Yeah. As NPCs or yep. something. Absolutely. Or as playable characters. And don't forget, we're working on a book. We're working on a book. The Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games uh, out this June. June. At Origins. Yeah, that's where so, we'll premiere. Uh, we are still taking ads, so if you're in the chat and you're like, wow, I really need to do a better job at promoting whatever my product is, yep. come see me, I'll take care of you. Yeah. <laughs> drop, drop us a uh, direct message if, if that is something that is in your arena. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you know, just keep your eyes open, it will be available in June, and I, I know everybody out there is gonna wanna have a copy. We've got some really good interviews with some really good industry professionals. Yeah. Uh, some known, big known indus industry professionals, and how cool is it to get their point of view on the tabletop collectible side right. of things. Absolutely. Um, also, go to your local game store, uh, that's where you'll be able to find all these amazing books from Dungeons and Dragons, the yeah. Player's Handbook, the DMG, the Monster Manuals, all the other guide books that are out there and, and source source books, um, dice, all the things you'd need to play. Uh, and also, you may find some people to play with if you don't currently have a, um, a group of players that you get together on a um, regular basis. Right. In a, if not, maybe you could go there and start a group of players because maybe there's someone else looking and you could be the one that brings it all together and start that community 
at your local game store. Play more games. Play more games. Go to your local game store. That's right. Yes. Don't don't uh, don't uh, fall to retail apocalypse. Well, yeah. yeah. So on that note, this has been Building Character. I'm Rick. I'm Carrie. And we'll see you at the game store. Thanks. Don't forget to subscribe to Game Trade Media. Leave a like and comment on what videos you'd like to see next.